Good morning, and welcome to another edition of CBC Unplugged. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Richard Gaines, we are so grateful that you have chosen to worship with us on this Lord's Day. We recognize that even while we're away from one another, the same God that meets us in the sanctuary is the same God that is with you even now in your homes and on your mobile devices. As such, we invite you to join with us even virtually as we celebrate our God. Sing at singing time, pray at praying time, affirm the word as it goes forth, even give at giving time. Wherever you are, you're still a special part of this experience, and we invite you to be present in this moment, trusting that God had something just for you. Now, let's worship God together.
Good morning, Consolidated and guests. Once again, we have the privilege of greeting you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is alive and well. This, again, is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to just worship with us this morning, even as I thank God for your presence. Wherever you are around this country, we welcome you to this time of worship and fellowship. And we even now give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. So wherever you are, before we go any further, just put your hands together in your bedroom. Put your hands together in the living room. Put your hands together wherever you find yourself as we celebrate the goodness of our God. Thank God for the ministry of music, and we certainly thank God for each of you that have chosen to join us on this, the Lord's Day. Uh, it's been a great week. God has blessed us. God has kept us safe and from all hurt, harm, and danger. God has strengthened us, provided for us, and protected us. And so today, we just want to celebrate the goodness of our God in this season of Thanksgiving and just be reminded that it's a good time to say thank you, Jesus. It's a great time to say thank you, Lord, because he's been mighty good to us. So wherever you are, just bless God for being good. Go ahead and thank him right now, and we'll be sharing more on that topic of thanks in just a few minutes. But I don't know about you, but I just want to tell you, I'm thankful today. I'm grateful today that God has granted us another opportunity to gather even virtually to lift up the name of the Lord. I invite you to open your Bible with me this morning. Uh, make sure your device is on that you might uh, not just follow, but join us in the reading of the Word of God as recorded in Psalms 136. I'm going to read two verses from that psalm, the first verse and the last verse. That being Psalms 136, verse number 1, and Psalm 136, verse number 26. I'll give you a moment to arrive there. I'll be reading from the New King James Version this morning as we seek to lift up a word that we might be blessed and encouraged as the people of God. Psalms 136, verse number 1, and verse 26 reads as follows. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. Such is the reading of the word of God. Join me now for a moment of prayer. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. God, in this season of thanksgiving, we certainly want to be faithful in thanking you for all that you've done for us. And God, as we think about how you've blessed us and watched over us, we are reminded of just how great you are, that you alone are the true and living God. And so, God, we worship you. We praise you. We exalt your holy and righteous name this morning. We bless you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, I bless all that have joined this time of worship today. Oh God, speak to our hearts that we might be encouraged and inspired, but also if there be sin in our lives that we might be convicted, oh God. Even now, God, draw us near unto thee that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. This we ask in the precious, powerful name of Jesus Christ. And it's in that name we pray and give thanks. And the people of God together said, Amen and Amen. To God be the glory, for great things hath he done. I want to tag this text uh, with this title this morning, Why I Still Give Thanks. Why I Still Give Thanks. As I look around at the events going on in the world, in this country known as the United States of America, in this state known as Kentucky, uh, it would be easy to just start complaining if one is not careful. Even in our beloved Lexington, which is on pace to set another record in homicides for another year, one could easily begin to complain about almost anything he or she chooses. 
This past week, old man winter snuck in on us, as happens every year at this same time, and already I'm hearing complaints. But allow me to share this with you just in case you're feeling tempted to complain about anything at all. Today, like every day, I can still hear my foreparents saying, thank you, Jesus, for one more day. And when somebody would say just how bad they thought it was, their standard reply would always be, things could always be worse. Quite a sobering thought, don't you think, that things would be worse than they are? You'd hear statements like, though the job I've got in the job I desire, I'm still employed. Though the doctor's report wasn't what I'd hoped for, it was not a terminal diagnosis. No, we didn't get to go to school and graduate, but our children, our grandchildren are, are making it to school. And though they may not graduate magna cum laude, they will graduate. Believe me, my brothers and my sisters, when I tell you that things could always be worse. I want to encourage somebody this morning to just take another look at your life, at my life, that we might look at our lives and seek a fresh perspective. Take another look, if you will, only this time, look at your situation through the eyes of God rather than looking at God through the eyes of your situation. Rather than concluding that things are so bad, ask yourself this question. What is God up to? Second question, where is God in all of this? Let me repeat that. First question, what is God up to in my situation? Second question, where is God in all of this? Remember that you as a child of God, as one who has been born again, uh, we can claim the promise that God causes all things to work together for the good of them that love him and of the called according to his purpose. It is not like God is unaware of what you're going through. Actually, the circumstances you have dealt with and are dealing with right now, God himself either sent it or he is allowing it. Either way, God is superintending your situation. In other words, he is watching over and directing the very events of your lives. Now, knowing this, as a child of God, ought to allow us to relax and be at peace uh, just a little while in the midst of all that is going on around us, or even in us. How can I persuade you this morning that you might be at peace? Scripture reminds us uh, with these words, they that keep their minds stayed on Jesus, he will keep in perfect peace. Now, this sounds easy enough, but the truth is it is challenging for most of us because we get distracted so easily by what is going on around us. And eventually that affects what's going on within us. I offer up just a few said distractions. Uh, proclaimed climate change. Yeah, yeah. It, it's causing a lot of folk to be restless. <laughs> Tensions between nations, the threat of war, all of which seem to be militarized, uh, keeps not just leaders awake, but folk in uh, little town, USA, are concerned about it. Recent hurricanes have folk flinching at the mere mention of rain with accompanying thoughts such as, are we going to flood again? The COVID-19 pandemic has infected over 47 million Americans with over 763,000 actually dying from the virus. This has many still on edge about what the future holds. If that's not enough, we deal with political divisiveness along socioeconomic lines, uh, along racial lines, and the list goes on and on and on. As one born in the late 50s, it is somewhat appalling that in 2021, we're still fighting the same battles we fought in the 60s and the 70s. At that time, we were fighting for voting rights. Guess what? Today, we're still fighting for voting rights. 
Back then, we were fighting for a fair and just judicial system. Guess what? Today, we're still fighting for a fair and just judicial system. Even armed with video, it is still hard to get a group of so-called peers to convict one of their own of wrongdoing, including murder itself. Just this week, two men were exonerated in the death of Malcolm X after spending decades, I repeat, decades in prison for a crime they did not commit, only to finally find out that the judicial system had failed them as authorities hid evidence, repeat, hid evidence that would have exonerated them decades ago. Ah, oh, it, 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 it'll break your heart when you pause and, and think about it. it. It'll just, it'll break your heart. Decades they had lost. Decades away from friends and family. Decades away from the possibility of being a productive citizen in society. But by now, somebody's asking the question, Rev, what does all of that have to do with the price of tea in China? Or what does it have to do with Jesus on a Sunday morning? To your credit, you ask a relevant question. Here is my attempt at an answer. After all we've been through, we are still here. By the grace of God, we are still here. It's a wonder that we have not lost our minds with all that we've had to endure at, at the hands of those, many of which call themselves Christians. All I can say is God is a very present help in our time of trouble. It is for this reason that I will yet give thanks. Despite where we've been, I'm going to give thanks. Despite what we're going through right now, I'm still going to give thanks. Now, lest I be accused of not preaching the Bible, allow me to get to the text. Psalms 136 offers thanksgiving to God for his enduring mercy. This entire psalm is one of descriptive praise. It literally offers thanks and praise for the gracious acts of God throughout salvation history. The psalmist quite dramatically distinguishes God from every other being in offering up multiple acts of kindness, amen, toward his people and on behalf of his people. From creation itself, to the maintenance and care of that creation, God is presented as the, in the awesomeness of his power. For the record, this is not to encourage you to go on a scientific hunt trying to discover scientific facts. But instead, it is presented to prompt you to worship and praise God uh, by his appreciative people. That's you. The first point, and I only got two points this morning. The first one is this that's found in our text, comes in the form of a command. Number one, we are commanded to give thanks. Ah, uh, let me remind us. We are commanded to give thanks. This is not a recommendation. It is not simply put out by the psalmist for our consideration. It is not a holy hunch, but it is an actual command. We are commanded to give thanks to the Lord. The psalmist then ask, uh, offers an answer to an irrelevant question of why we ought to give thanks. Because he is good, for his mercy endures forever. That's a good reason to shout, good place to shout right there. We give thanks because God is good and his mercy endures forever. To give thanks in our psalm here is to give public acknowledgement. In other words, this thanks offered to God is not to be done on the low. No, this is front and center. This is no shame in my praise right here. This, this is me coming to the front and lifting hands and opening my mouth and not being ashamed of my relationship with God. This is thanksgiving out of the overflow of remembering all that the Lord has done for me. Some thinking literally causes one to overflow with gratitude and before you know it, your hand is in the air and your feet have begun to move and even though you had planned to keep it to yourself, your mouth came open and out 
of your mouth came words of thank you in a or in country boy language, much obliged. You, you weren't ashamed. You wanted everybody to know that you were grateful for what God had done. But it wasn't for them. It was to God. And we do all of this, my brothers and sisters, because God is good. God is good. God is good. We use this word good to describe so much that it has lost some of its luster. Allow me to try and shine it up again for this presentation this morning. Uh, good here is used in relation to God as being favorable, to be pleasing, to be delightful. Yeah, to be appropriate, to be becoming, and to be glad. By now, you can see that good is not simply something that God does. Though God does good things, good is who God is. Good speaks to the character, the being of the person of who God is. He is always consistent in his goodness. I find this important for us to understand because it is entirely possible to do good things and not be a good person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but not so with God. For Jesus himself declared that no man is good save God himself. Even Jesus did not include himself in the good category. So with this in mind, we ought always be guilty of giving God thanks without any pushback are prompted at all. Uh, my second point, and I'm in my seat, is simply this. We thank God for his enduring mercy. Yeah, yeah, we, we give thanks because we're commanded to do so, but we also thank God for his enduring mercy. Uh, mercy, mercy, we hear that term quite often, mercy. It's, it's defined or translated as loyal love. Not just love, but loyal love. Within the Psalms, this is the most significant term used, amen, to describe the character of God. Uh, God is love and God is loyal. God is loyal and God is love. Amen. Please note the psalmist's use of the word enduring as a modifier for the term mercy. This is not just a single act of mercy, but his mercy endures forever. Amen. His mercy endures. His mercy endures. His mercy endures. Mercy that lasts. Mercy that when challenged, every time comes out of the struggle victorious. This is a mercy that is strong and mighty in and of itself because it describes an active God working on our behalf to keep from us that which we rightly deserve. The writer of this psalm walks us through the life of the Israelites. Through bondage in Egypt, their rebellion against God, their deliverance from enemies, God's protection of them from their enemies, fighting their battles during the journey, and finally deliverance into the promised land. Not because they... ...disappointed God, but God's mercies, which are new and fresh every morning, kept from them that which they deserve. Does that not sound familiar, at least a little bit like your story? Or my story, before we break hard on the Israelites and cut them up in criticism, let us remember from which we have come ourselves. All of us have sinned and gone astray. All of us have fallen short of the word glory of God. All of us could have been consumed or destroyed, written off. But this merciful God looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. I don't know how you feel about it, but I need mercy. Every day, I need his mercies. Multiple times a day, I need his mercy. Aren't you glad his mercy is an enduring mercy? 
It doesn't just work on Sunday, but it works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every day his mercies are new and fresh every morning. This psalm ends the same way it began, with celebration of God's faithfulness to Israel and a call to thank him, a command to thank him for his goodness. I believe you and I could be expected to do no less. Just take a moment with me and look back over your life and think about his goodness to you. After all, we are in a season of thanksgiving. As I think for myself, I got a few things I'm just thankful for as it relates to this great God. I'm, I'm thankful that he created me. I'm thankful that he's sustaining me. I'm thankful that he found me. I'm thankful that he delivered me. I'm thankful that he saved me. I'm thankful that he sanctified me. I'm thankful that one day he's going to glorify me. I'm thankful that he guides me. I'm thankful that he is protecting me. I'm thankful that he's teaching me. I'm thankful that he's feeding me. I'm thankful that he's caring for me. I'm thankful that he woke me up this morning. I'm thankful that he kept me all day long. But most of all, I'm thankful that he died for me. So in spite of all that I've been through or maybe going through right now, I'm still going to worship him. I yet have reason to give him thanks. As I thank him, I have more and more reasons to do so. For as I thank him, I think about who he is. And my mind rolls back to the last time he rescued me. The last time he delivered me. The last time he forgave me. The last time he cleaned me up and sent me on my way. When each time I deserve to die, he only offered me life. My brothers and sisters, I have a right and I have a responsibility to say thank you for he is good and his mercies endure forever. On the way to my seat, can I just remind somebody of the price he paid for your sins? God sent his only begotten son into the world and he died for our sins. He didn't have to die, but his love for us is what kept him on that old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. They buried your Savior and my Savior in that borrowed tomb. But the Bible reminds me that he rose bright early on that Sunday morning. And even now, he's seated at the right hand of God making intercession for us. So I just want to thank God because he's done so much for me. I wish I could, but I just can't tell it all. God's been better to me than I've been to myself. And I want to be faithful to follow the command of the psalmist to give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures to all generations. To God be the glory, to God be the honor, and to God be the praise. Hallelujah and amen. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. What a mighty God we serve. He's done so much for us. So much. The least we can do is say thank you. I used to hear the older folks say back in the community, when people are nice to you, you ought to say thank you. Because when they're nice, they don't have to be nice to you. So when they are, tell them thank you. Give thought for a moment to what God has done for you. You ought to be able to say thank you. No matter how you feel, no matter what your lot is in life, you ought to be able to find at least one thank you in the depths of your heart. Somewhere in your soul, you ought to have a thank you, a much obliged. God, you didn't have to, but you did. And I want you to know, God, I appreciate what you've done for me. I was a wretch undone, but God, you came and rescued me. Thank you. God, I had a destiny called hell, but you turned my life around. Thank you. God, I was sick, and the doctor said I only had about six months. It's been six years, and I'm still here, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
God, they told me when I was a little toddler, wasn't going to amount to nothing. There wasn't going to be anybody. But look what you've done. Thank you, God. Thank you. Had some ups, had some downs, some hills and some valleys. I had some challenges, but your mercy endures. And God, you kept me in my right mind. You kept my enemies at bay. God, you did for me what I could not do for myself. And I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. God, I thank you for being so good to me. God, you have even saved me from myself. Not to mention other things and other people. You alone are God. You alone have overwhelmed me with your enduring mercy and your amazing grace. Not because I deserved it, not because I was worthy of it, not because I came looking for you. But Lord, like every other person, I had turned away from you. But you came and found me. You rescued me. And for that, God, I say thank you. I bless your name, God. I praise your name. I honor you as the most high God. And God, I'm grateful for what is. Because when I look back over my life and consider what could have been, I can't help but be thankful. I can't help but be grateful. Because only you could have saved me. My mama my daddy, my sister, my brother, they, they couldn't do it, God, but you did it. You shed the blood to save a wretch like me. And for that, I'm grateful. God, today, I just recommit my life to you all over again. God, I lay my all on the altar. Do with me what you will. Have thine own way. Break where need be and remold, reshape, recast. Remove this heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh that I might serve you faithfully and righteously. That you might be the most important person in my life. God, I thank you for all you've done, for what you're doing, and for what you're going to do. And God, I give your name the praise, and I give you thanks. This I pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In that name we pray and give thanks. And everybody everywhere said amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory. For great things hath he done. <clears throat> I don't know how you feel, but I, I have a belief that God knows how you feel. And no matter how you feel about you, let me remind you of how God feels about you. God loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for you. He says, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. His word says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, God's grace is sufficient. And I already told you, his mercy endures to all generations. So today I have the wonderful privilege of inviting you to join the family of God. God is standing with his arms wide open saying, whoever will, let them come. Man, woman, boy, or girl, if you can believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and confess with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart one believes, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
Won't you say yes to God even now? If God is speaking to your heart and you're ready to give your life to him, to let him in, pray this prayer with me. Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. Lord, I desire an intimate relationship with you. I desire the gift of eternal life. I want to be your child. God, I do believe that Jesus is Lord. I confess, I agree with what you said, that you have raised him from the dead. And based on your word, God, if I believe and confess, I will be saved. So I thank you in faith for coming into my life right now. Thank you for saving me from a place called hell and giving me the gift of eternal life on a home called heaven. God, thank you for loving me enough to look beyond my faults and tending to my every need. God, I thank you and I love you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray and give thanks. And the people of God said, Amen. Listen, I'm excited for you, with you, if you prayed the prayer of salvation this morning. The Bible says every time one single person gives his or her life to Christ, the angels in heaven have a celebration. We want to celebrate with you. If you gave your life to Christ today, let us hear from you. Uh, on the screen, there is a number you can touch for a Zoom call that will put you in contact with decision counselors. They will walk you through the decision you have just made and help get you connected to the consolidated church family. We would welcome you into this fellowship. I would love to be your pastor <clears throat> that we might grow up together in the faith. Or you might go on our website, fill out a decision card. If you'll fill it out completely, we will contact you ASAP as soon as possible. Uh, talk to you about the decision you've made and get you connected to the Consolidated Church family. Or you can call us at 859-299-8559. Again, that's 859-299-8559. But we welcome you to the fellowship. If you're already saved and you're looking for a church home and God has directed you, God has called you to this house known as Consolidated, we would welcome you as well into this fellowship. God is on the move. God is at work. Join God, won't you, in what God is doing that we might grow up in the faith together. Again, thank you for the decisions that you've made, and I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you personally in the days to come. Again, to God be the glory for great things hath he done. Amen, amen, and amen. <clears throat> Thank God for the word today. I pray that you were blessed, you were encouraged by it. Even now we come to the time in our service where we continue our worship in the joy of giving. I emphasize the joy of giving. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. At this point, I just want to remind us that the word of God says to us, where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. It does not say where our hearts are, our treasure would be. It says where our treasure is, there our hearts will be also. We've been in pandemic for the better part of a year and a half now, but God has been faithful to meet the needs of this congregation. But I want to challenge us to do even more, to be more faithful in our giving as the people of God, as members of the Consolidated Baptist Church. Many of you have been faithful in your giving over the, this period of the pandemic. Uh, others have uh, not been as consistent as you were before. I want to encourage you now, especially the next five Sundays of this year, to finish strong in your worship, in your praise, part of which is in your giving. We want to be faithful in giving back to God that which belongs 
to God. The more we give, the more we're able to do in ministry, not just in the house, but in this community and beyond. And God has allowed us to do so much during this pandemic. I can't wait till we get back, but uh, let me just say up front, there's much to be done. And part of that will be done by our giving as the people of God. So join us in giving. We have five ways to give in Consolidated Life. Five ways on your screen even now. You can give via our church app. You can give via our website. You can text your offering to 84321. You can mail your offering to 1625 Russell Cave Road. Lexington, Kentucky, 40505. Or you could drop off your offering at the church. We have a secure mailbox under the canopy on the street side. Either of those five ways you can give in consolidated life. And trusting that you're going to do so and be faithful, we want to just pray right now to bless you in your giving that you might give joyfully uh, at the level that pleases God. Amen. So join me in prayer. Even now, God, we come before you. Even now, thanking you for what has been, thanking you for what is, thanking you in advance for what shall be. For God, I am convinced that the best is yet to come in the life of the Consolidated Baptist Church and the community that surrounds her. Father God, touch our hearts that we might be found faithful to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us to be stewards over. God, help us to comfortably, joyfully, cheerfully be generous givers. Let us not be limited even by the tithe, but where God has blessed us to give more abundantly, let us be faithful to do just that. And in all that takes place, God, may you be glorified and may your people be blessed. This we ask in the precious, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the people of God together said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. To God be the glory, for great things hath he done. Amen, CBC. Thank you so much to all those who gave. Those who didn't have it to give, we're praying the next time you come to God's house, even virtually, you will have something to give on that Sunday morning. But before we leave, my friends, a few quick announcements to offer today. They are not many, but first and foremost, please know that in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday, the church office will close on this Wednesday afternoon and remain closed for the remainder of the week that our leaders can spend time with their families. We know it's Thanksgiving, it's the holiday season, and we want everybody on the team to make sure they spend time with their families this week. So we will see you on next week following the Thanksgiving holiday. Secondly and lastly, if you're up for another round of worship on this Sunday morning, our very own Pastor Gaines is sharing this week with our good friend, the Reverend Dr. F. Bruce Williams and the Bates Memorial Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. They are virtual as well, just like we are, and they are worshiping at 8 a.m., 10 a.m. and 12 noon. So once you leave this broadcast, slide on over to Bates Memorial and let's support our senior pastors he shares today for their seniors weekend. Amen. Preach, Pastor. Preach, Pastor. Yes, I know he will do just that. It's prayer time today, my friends. And even now, you'll find requests on the screen. A few we want to emphasize today. Brother William Emerson, Brother Stanley Gaines, Sister Charlene Little, Sister Charles Etta Minor, Deacon Jim Wims, the family of Brother Darren Marion, the family of Brother Mushud Abulu, who made the transition, and the family of Brother Barry Turner, who was memorialized on yesterday. Of course, to all those who remain affected by COVID-19, we want to be in prayer with them and for them that God's will will be done in their lives and we will stay safe and protected. Let's pray. God, in Jesus' name, how we thank you, how we honor you, how we bless your name for who you are in our lives, God. We thank you for our eyes have seen, ears have heard, hearts have felt today, God. We thank you for the worship we've experienced, God, for the word that went forth today with power and authority. And we pray, God, that you are pleased with our worship and pleased with our praise today, even virtually. And God, as we leave this place, God, we've heard the requests that have been made known one by one and name by name. So God, simply have your own way, God. Heal, God. Deliver, God. Set free, God. Send um, whatever you can do, God, whatever is needed, God. Do it by your spirit in such a way that we'll know it was by your power and by your spirit 
that we are in the place we're in. Be with us, stand by us, keep us in your care. And we'll be ever so careful to bless your holy name. So we just say this, God, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy, God, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church say amen, amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. May God's grace and mercy follow you all the days of your life. And until we meet again, the Lord bless and keep you is my prayer. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of CBC Unplugged. We are so grateful that you chose to worship with us today, and we pray that you were blessed by the Word of God. Don't forget, we have five ways to give here at Consolidated. You can give via the CBC mobile app. You can give online at www.consolidatedbaptist.org. You can give via text to 84321. You can give by mail via the address on your screen, or you can even physically drop off your gift to the safe deposit mailbox on the Russell K. side of our church campus. However you choose to give, we thank God for your continued faithfulness, and we encourage you to utilize the medium of your choice. Make sure you stay connected with us via our website, mobile app, and social media platforms for any and all updates regarding our digital offerings throughout the week. On behalf of Pastor Gaines and all of us here at Consolidated, please know that we are praying with you and for you. Until next time, God bless and have a great week.